Hey guys! So today you and I are going to talk about backend and knowledge. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how much is a backend developer expected to know about the backend? And the short answer is that depends a lot on where you work. If you work as a junior in a mid-sized company or a junior in a back in a startup or something like that, or if you're a more senior experience working in either of these ty these types of companies, let me explain. So this this question was a little bit of a well a little bit of a story, but this person has been working for a little while, and basically his question is: Has he expressed it more geared towards not like startups but mid-sized corporations? And he was wondering like where do where do we actually draw the line of responsibility for a backend developer? And this is a great question, like because where where is that line? You may think, and I have talked to. So so many people who seem to believe that if I say that you're a backend developer, that means that you are in charge of everything that is basically behind the UI. And some front-end developers that I've talked to as well, and I've explained to them like learning some basics about how a server works does not make you a backend developer. It makes you a front-end developer who knows how the web works, which is pretty a pretty good thing. But for a backend developer, you might actually think that your responsibility area is this, this entire big sphere of all the things from architecture, infrastructure, cloud solutions, security, application development, database administration, and all this stuff, right? Now, this person's question is more geared towards, okay, like apart from the boring old, as he puts it, crud stuff, what, like where do we draw the line? And this is why I was saying that it very much depends on your experience level and where you work, like what your role is. Because if we're gonna focus on mid-sized companies, Technically, this doesn't really only apply to mid-sized companies, it applies to startups as well. But startups are, they're more common when it comes to working in what we call DevOps. And I'll explain that as well. So traditionally, if we go way back in time, it used to be the case that a backend developer, that was what we call, well, it's an old term now, but it's called an application developer. Well, some people still call themselves application developers. And that is a term that you basically used in order to describe that you work on the server itself. In other words, the only thing that you'd really have responsibility for is that the incoming request hits your application server and you apply some business logic or something like that, right? You persist something to a database or you send it away to another service or something like that. You're responsible for the business logic code, the code that actually does the magic thing that your company makes money from, right? But it used to be the case that you had other roles that worked in tandem with this role, which were very, like there were many roles, but let's just take the simple ones, such as say a DBA, a database administrator. This was a person who was responsible for the database, for validating schemas, for helping business out with getting, gathering statistics and things of this nature, because you know, you have tons and tons of data and they want some metrics for their different presentations or different insights that they need, right? And then you have the operations team, which is like the DBA is a very, it's a fairly dying profession at this point. There's not that many people who are using, uh, who are doing that. It, we're moving towards DevOps and we will touch on that. But there were also these people we, uh, we called operations people, or they were basically responsible for the infrastructure, for deployment, for making sure that everything was running smoothly, logging, security, well, not necessarily security, but most of these things that actually make up the, well, the infrastructure, the running applications. Today, it's mostly based on cloud solutions, but people are still much, very much employed for this exact sort of role, right? Now, for you as a backend developer, depending on if you work in a DevOps culture or if you work in a traditional culture, your, the requirements on your skill and the requirements on knowledge for you is going to vary. Now, as the subscriber was saying, there is absolutely 
a need for you to know about the basic CRUD stuff, create, read, update, and delete. These applications are the bulk of what you're making. If you're starting out as a backend developer, the absolute first stop on your road to success is gonna to have to be learn how to build a REST API, learn how to create, read, update, and delete things into a database. That's just universal, that's in the bulk of what you do. And after that, there are other things such as you know, sessions and validations and things of this nature, but that is like the core of what you do. But if you work in a DevOps culture, you may actually need to learn a little bit more. There might be more for you to actually get into. And DevOps culture is a mashup between development and operations, and you combine these two. And the core of this basically means that the developers manage the infrastructure as well as the application development. I think that there's a saying saying something like, you built it, you maintain it, and you run it, or something like that. And that is exactly what DevOps culture is about. So then you actually need to know even more. And usually the way that companies deal with this sort of thing is either through educating their people in cloud solutions or like they don't even have to educate you. They might just require that you know this because this is the way they want to run their company. And usually this DevOps culture is, it's a byword. A lot of companies think for cheaper productivity, cheaper labor, because basically you don't need an operations team, that, but some of them don't actually understand that. If you cut away five operations people from the team, well, then that, that maintenance time and like all of the stuff that they were doing, because trust me, they're not just sitting around playing dominoes or something that time is going to be taken from the development time. So in order for you to actually do this in a sustainable way, either you have to have more developers or you have to have some form of automation tools. This is where things such as Docker, Kubernetes, Chef, Ansible, Salt, Puppeteer, all these different assistance tools that helps us set up infrastructure related things. Terraform is also a very important tool. It depends a little bit, right? But these sorts of tooling, they, they are more or less required in order to do this. And the same thing goes for, so the operations, like the role of a full-time operations person is sort of going the same way as the DBA. They're still around in a sense. The operations are still more present, I would say, than the DBAs. But more of that responsibility is through tooling being shuffled over to the development team. So if you are working in a traditional, like mid-sized corporation, also that the only thing that you really need to know as a backend developer, especially if you're a junior. If you're a junior, this is uh, there is not that much requirement on you for to know like how to set up. I don't know a cluster of computer like virtual machines and like provision these machines with different things and then add access rights and read and write access to different storage units and stuff like that. That's way most likely way over the requirements on your skills. But for a senior developer who might be working as an operations person or in this case a DevOps senior developer, these are things that are starting to become like a almost a little bit of a requirement. So what I want you to take away from this is that the scope of what the backend developer needs to know about the backend is not, as you may think, that you need to know everything. Because that is like the only time that's really true is if you're working in a DevOps company and not every company is running DevOps. There are still plenty of companies where you have a operations team. You might have a DBA team or something like that, but for the most part, you have an operations team and you have a development team. And the development team, they focus on the application. The actual logic and the business requirement and all of that stuff, the operations team are responsible for taking that code and putting it out there into cyberspace so that it all works. If you're working in a DevOps culture, you might find yourself in a situation where you need to take that responsibility as well. So then it's just the development team who does all of this and that usually adds more knowledge requirements on you as a developer. It's not like you have to know every single tool under the, the sun. There's usually a handful of tools that are very relevant for companies who run a DevOps type of culture. And if you're a junior developer, also that the requirements for you to know all of these very sophisticated things about infrastructure isn't all that high. You might be required to know something about Docker, maybe something about Kubernetes or something like that. But we're not talking that like your, your ex the expectation is that you are knowledgeable about all these things because these things are, I mean, it's an entire profession to know this stuff. So, if, so, so don't feel so stressed about that. So as I said, it just comes down to 
what's your role in which company? Are they running DevOps or are they running a more traditional type of thing? If they're not running DevOps, also that your the scope of what you, your responsibility is is very low. If they're running DevOps, it's gonna be bigger. Have a great day.